नमस्कार हेलो एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू सी आई ई टी एन सी आर टी स्पेशल लाइव फोन एंड इंटरक्टिव प्रोग्राम एंड टूडे इज द डे टू ऑफ आर ऑनलाइन ट्रेनिंग विच इज गोइंग ऑन स्टार्टेड येस्टडे ऑन ट्वेंटी फोर्थ ऑफ जुलाई एंड टूडे बींग द सेकेंड डे ऑफ दिस ऑनलाइन ट्रेनिंग द थीम इज डिवेलपमेंट ऑफ ई कॉन्टेंट इंटरक्टिव रिसोर्सेज on day 1 we discussed the interactive resources its concept format need and scope today we have entered into day 2 and the topic of discussion is going to be force for developing interactive resources with special reference to lumi if you have any questions any queries please reach out to us let me just give you a brief about this online training this is a 5 hour online training started yesterday and it will go on till 28th of july that is uh coming friday so every day at 4 o'clock we come here discuss a lot of things on the given topic and uh, we have an expert she uh, answers all your questions all your queries you write down your queries in the live chat box of our youtube channel which is nceert official in the live chat box you can write down your questions your queries and share them with us you can participate in this particular training you can uh, scan the qr code i will be showing you the entire page how you can be a participant how you can watch all the earlier sessions which have has been done and also how you can be a part of the quiz which will be given to you on 28th of july after the uh, session the last session will be ending and you will get enough time to be a participant in that quiz so uh, if you score more than 70% you will be getting a certificate for that but you need to allow us uh, 30 days to give you the certificate so please have some patience and uh, please watch this entire program because i'll be showing the details of this entire online training towards the end of this program now let me please introduce to you our guest for today she is miss uh, sushamna rao tadinata ma'am a very warm welcome to you thank you ma'am for being a part of this program ma'am is an edtech trainer and mentor she is a moodle certified educator and is a well known professional in the field of education and technology she is recognized as the 2022 oe global finalist for her contributions to open educational resources that is oer she serves as an edtech consultant for the camaris project at york university canada So once again I welcome my expert in this program and uh, we'll be uh, starting this discussion very soon but before that I have an announcement to make regarding a G20 presidency of India to all the viewers we are extremely proud of the fact that uh, we have uh, um, it's a very proud moment that india assumed g20 presidency and would convene the g20 leader summit for the first time in the country this year that is 2023 a nation deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism india's g20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play an important role by finding global pragmatic solutions for the well-being of all and in doing so manifest its true spirit of vasudhaiv kutumbakam or should i say the world is one family vasudhaiv kutumbakam also translates to one earth one family one future and that is exactly the theme of this year's india's g20 presidency before we begin this discussion let me tell you that uh, there are multiple mediums through which you can get in touch with us either you can give us a call on our number which is 8800440559 you're watching us on evidya channel number 6 to channel number 12 and uh, like i said also on ncrt official that is our youtube channel there's a specific uh, email id on which you can raise your questions either within the program or later as well the email id is training.helpdesk@cieet.nic.in so regarding this online training all the questions you have any queries you can raise your questions through this email id so uh, let's begin this discussion and uh, i would like to ask ma'am uh, ma'am what is it that we are going to discuss in this particular program regarding the topic that is force for developing interactive resources with special reference to lumi ma'am um yes tanvi first of all good evening uh, all the viewers and uh, force that is free and open source softwares i'll talk about it i'll talk about uh, 
interactive resources. And then uh, we will discuss about an application called uh, Lumi, that's again a uh, free and open source software, uh, which uh, uh, how, what and how we can really create those interactive resources using Lumi. I would like to give a demo on that too for our viewers and I'll accept any question and answers from them. Okay. I'll try to answer. Okay, so shall we begin ma'am? Yes, sure. Thank you so much, Tambi. Uh, so participants, as the title goes, all these things, uh, three things we would like to explore. That is first is interactive resources. Interactivity. As teachers, we all know, as academicians, we all know that how important it is in today's scenario, isn't it? Uh, unless uh, you make our learners part and parcel of uh, the teaching learning environment, unless you give them a choice and a chance to uh, really be involved actively in that particular uh, con uh, concept in the environment, we can't really give them the learning that we would like to give, the knowledge that we would like to disseminate. When it comes to uh, interactive T types in our um, education and uh, teaching learning environment, according to Moore, it is three types that uh, we uh, broadly concentrate on three types of interactivity types. That is learner-learner interaction, learner-teacher interaction, and the learner-content interaction. The third type that what we are going to discuss today, and uh, we all know how uh, important it is to boost retention and knowledge uh, transfer and engagement to create um, while we create these interactive activities. So when it comes to uh, interactive uh, activities or interactive resource creation, um, we need some applications definitely. So what kind of applications? If it is really a pocket friendly one and which is a robust one, then it is good. That's why the topic came here is FOSS, free and open source softwares. There are many um, softwares available as uh, open source and free ones. But then what is so special about them? When any software, piece of software is uh, said it is a free and open source, that means that the entire code is available to the public right? And with some open license, it, which defines what we can do with it how we can utilize it, especially we have a user control. If we have resources, we can customize it, not just the look and feel of it, but also its functionalities. And about the openness and freedom that it gives us, the choice to mount that particular piece of software the way we want it, the outputs. And it gives us flexibility, flexibility to uh, handle certain outputs. If it is an open source software, the code is visible to public. And we, if we have the resources, the customization is possible, as I said. And of course, cost saving, right? When it is a free and open source software, it is cost saving. For example, here, I will give you some free and open source software examples. Then maybe you understand better about it. Okay, when it comes to security and stability, yes, there is a very strong uh, community will be available for any kind of especially popular free and open source softwares where we can definitely uh, read the security uh, options and how secure that particular software is. When it comes to examples, we all use uh, our regular office tools, right? Unless we pay, we won't get it the popularized uh, uh, tools uh, we use. But there are free options. But then when it comes to FOSS, I said open source, that is code is available to public and we can customize it. I mean, we here in the sense I'm talking about as an organization. So if we have a resources, then we can customize it. Similarly, even for image editing, we have a GIMP. That's called G-I-M-P. Okay. And there are uh, options like uh, video editing 3d mod for 3d modeling works for example blender is a 3d uh, modeling software you can use it you can freely download it and shortcut that is s h o t c u t that's a video editor and also there is a wonderful 2d animation and digital painting tool it's called krita i don't know how many of you heard about it it's really a nice and a wonderful tool artistic tool to create uh, digital paintings and then comes an uh, 
audio editor and an audio recorder that is Audacity for you. Then there is a e-learning authoring tool called H5P. And there is a, a application called Lumi, which is also a free and open source software, which offers a collection of tools to create, edit, and share digital content. As of now, uh, Lumi is it's in a development process. As of now, it is offering only H5P editor. That means to create H5P interactive activities only as of today with the Lumi application. So before we really jump onto uh, the Lumi application, we will try to understand what is this H5P. So before that, I would like to ask viewers, any of these POS tools are you using or did you use? Uh, are there any answers in the chat, Tanvi? I just want to reply to them and then I'll continue. Ma'am, we'll be I'm, receiving the answers. So, uh, okay. yeah, you can continue and I'll let you know the answers. Sure, sure. So, any FOSS tools, uh, that will be good to understand if there is anything else that is used in the teaching learning environment. Or sometimes we find users using many other um, extraordinary, wonderful tools. Coming to H5P. Okay, H5P is a short form of HTML5, the name uh, derived from HTML5. What all it needs is to, when you create any content using H5P authoring tool, you need a browser to view that content. It's basically a content authoring tool. You can create, share, and reuse very easily. Easily here, what I meant is easy for academicians to create content and share and also easy for users, that is here, the learners, to access that particular piece of content. Because it is based on HTML5, it just needs a browser. You can create a responsive interactive content. That means uh, your content created can be uh, viewed even on mobiles. Any kind of a device, it will adjust, okay? If you have any content management system or a learning management system, the compatibility is too good. There are more than 50 content types that you can develop with H5P and it supports uh, multiple languages. So uh, if you want to create uh, activity in Hindi or Urdu or Tamil, Telugu, yes, it supports. Similarly, even for equations, some people ask me about that, whether it supports to type equations. Yes, it supports. Okay. Ma'am, we have received answers from uh, multiple viewers of ours. So, should I tell you? Yes, please. So, they have written Open Office, uh, Krita, Lumi, Blender, uh, H5P, Audacity, Liber Office, GIMP, and uh, Krita has been answered by many uh, viewers. Okay, so Krita is new to them. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Thank you, Tanmi. Thank you. So uh, I'm, I'm always happy to uh, share something new to my participants whenever I talk to them in any workshop. So thank you, uh, viewers. You can always write out Krita too for your uh, 2D. Right now, our topic is uh, concentrated on Lumi and H5P. I'll try to give more uh, insights on to that. Here, you are viewing a demo of what you can create with H5P. There is a memory, memory game, and this is an example. I think uh, you have seen uh, on the first day also about this uh, drag and drop activities. And there are various other types of uh, fill in the blanks or uh, you can create image-based ones or interactive presentations and videos too. But how do we know that how many types are there and how do we decide what kind of content type is really good? Because when you go to uh, h5p.org, they are all the examples are given with all the tutorials, very well articulated. But then um, based on uh, uh, some work, I thought of an idea to create these all these activities to put it them to put them in a periodic table way, you know, to understand uh, giving them a color code to understand what are all these resources. For example, in this image, you can see uh, just below the pink one is that uh, kind of an orange shade. There are uh, almost five of them where 
they are, you know, I, I call them as a compound activities where you can have these task based that yellow ones can be integrated into those orange ones. For example, in a course presentation that we call it as like your any other presentation that we prepare for H5P, it is a course presentation where you can have multiple choice or single choice questions or image based interactive activities or even an interactive video you can add. Whereas these yellow ones are about just to present any assessment task. So these blue ones are only presenting data to them. Okay. For example, um, if you take a Agamotto where uh, we call it uh, like to present two, three images together or to collage to uh, many images together to present, to show them a collage, that is just a presentation. There is no task involved over there as such. So this is the idea that I thought that let me uh, show you when I got the idea to create this periodic table way of displaying these images. I thought, why don't I make it an interactive way? So I used again a H5P here. I created this image into interactive image. So that's the beauty of the software. You can take a piece of text and you can make it interactive. You can take a presentation. You can add some content in between. So coming to this um, Lumi application. See, we are talking about H5P app. Uh, all content types and then Lumi. Don't get confused. H5P is an authoring tool which offers us various content types. I showed you examples. And then Lumi is an another open source application which supports interactive content creation. As of now, it is supporting H5P editor. As of now, it is supporting H5P editor. So it is an application to create H5P interactive content and there are options to download this app from uh, your app store if you are using a windows or you have also have an option to use on cloud but it's always it's preferable to use a desktop app because you can utilize it offline too you can create save share with others as a h5p file or a html file or a scom package or you can open existing h5p files when you go to lumi.education, don't get confused here. Here I have given the URL um, clearly, lumi.education. Go to lumi.education and then you have an option to download. Remember, it supports 64-bit system and then you download it on your machine and then you open it from the App Store if you are using the Windows and then accept all the privacy statement and then you will see that Lumi application on your desktop having two buttons that is H5P editor and Lumi analytics. We are talking about H5P editor today. When you open a H5P editor, when you click on that H5P editor, you will see two buttons again. One is to open existing H5P content if you have any or you can create a new one. When you click them, create a new one, this is the interface of our editor. Remember, there are various ways to create these H5P activities wherever you create. The editor look and feel the interface is the same. So you chose which content type that you want to create. You can click on get and install and then use them. Remember to use this Lumi application offline. You have to download all your content types when you are connected to the internet on your desktop, then you can utilize it. Once you install, you can use them even offline. Okay, so uh, I want to give a demo on mark the words content type. This is a content type, very interesting one because uh, you will have, let me show you, I'm sorry. You will have an option to, um, give learner to select particular word in that sentence here you can see that right so you can you can give them an option even for a retry and with a feedback that's the beauty of interactive content you can provide a feedback and also give them an option to correct their mistakes you can you give them an option for learner to make mistakes so that 
they can learn that is what the knowledge retention is again and again they can practice and then they can utilize it this uh, particular piece is very good mark the words is very good for a uh, language learning but then there are teachers creativity is the key here you can see on my screen uh, there are teachers who created uh, mark the words activity for their nursing class that is on a nutrition and also some uh, uh, environmental um, options environmentally sustainable products so the teacher have given a paragraph and then asked students to identify the words that relate to environmentally sustainable products how beautiful it is so creativity is the key technology will have various features it's up to a teacher how to utilize that particular piece of content coming to this uh, hyp activities again when you open in lumi once you create it you save it as a hyp file to use reuse again to open and reuse or use in your lms for example you don't have any learning management system then you can export it as a uh, all in one html file and then you can share that html file with your users also with reporter you can provide for example you include a reporter uh, while saving is html file this is how it looks for the user so a user can interact with this piece of content and then click on this simple small download button and then they can enter the name and then they can send that lumi file to you so you can analyze it in lumi analytics but remember hyp activities are only for a formative assessment but not for a summative one before creating i would like to give few tips first we have to understand the environment that we are in the students are in how they are able to access it and then we have to plan and map the content topics with the learning objectives it's it, it doesn't mean that because we have a interactive content creation tool it just it merely don't jump and create them just see that whether the content is really engaging and which helps or aids a student's uh, engagement and student's understanding student's involvement whether it is really improving that aid encouragement for them to participate so we have to ensure content is presented in a language and a format accessible to diverse learners and then you have to utilize the feedback option of all content types every hyp content type will have a basic settings a few of them are like uh, overall feedback and behavioral settings for each content type these behavioral settings differ so whenever possible if the content type uh, gives you an option provide hints for the user and also you can check for accessibility hyp content types as i said more than 50 varieties are there in a hyp.org you can view which are accessible content types here what i meant by accessible is which are screen reader friendly or the young and friendly content types when you create any content type please check with that now we'll get on to uh, the demo part of it let me show you how it looks like on a lumi I hope you all can see my desktop Lumi yes. application. Thank you. So this is editor and Lumi. When I click on editor, I can open existing HYP or create a new HYP. I will click on a create a new HYP. See, I told you that uh, when I don't really install all the content types, this this is how it looks like. Get. When you click on get you will have a button called install when you install there is a but there will be a button called use them for example here i will go to mark the words and because i already installed it the editor have come up there is an option first is to give title title of the content type remember this is there is a small button here called metadata for hyp which is very important which allows us to provide author details and licensing information for the content types this metadata in hyp we can add at different levels also 
As I said, a compound content types can have a simple task. For example, you, are, you have taken a simple task from any open resource library. You want to add it into a course presentation or an interactive book. You have to add that particular metadata into that. For example, now this is a simple task that we are creating. I'll click on metadata and then there is a title here. I will give sample mark the words and license. If you are aware of this Creative Commons open licenses, these are the options that depending upon how you are remixing the content, for example, you are taking any content from Diksha portal. I remember seeing all uh, the content there is shared with CC by license. So you can click on um, it, that is com compatible to remix. So you can create a CC by or if you are creating all by yourself, then you can choose which license that you want to give to the user as of now most free and most open license i would like to take is cc by there is also other there are also other options you can go through and then you can provide if you are reusing any content from any site you can provide the source and then you can provide here author's name you can add as many authors or you can also have a uh, add an editor or a licensee or originator to. For now, this is the data. I'll just copy this and save metadata. So title is marked here. Coming to the task description. So wh what we are expecting our learner to do. So here I would like to give mark the words content type where I want my user to identify um, adjectives maybe. Okay. Identify in the following sentence and click on them that's the task okay uh, if you are giving a task based on an image also you can add that image from this media option whenever you add any image here again it will ask you to add the copyright information so respect copyright and provide the copyright Please try to use openly licensed or public um, domain images. Coming to the next option that is text field. This is where we provide our user with the content that we, uh, our learner to identify those words here. So I kept a few things on my notepad. I'll just take them and I'll paste it here and remember how, uh, for example, you have given like this and there is a tab here to click on view. You can always click on view and see, but then we haven't identified what really the words to really identify, uh, the user can identify. So how do you define those correct options? So you have to keep the correct options between asterisks. So let me keep that between asterisks and okay so the tall man John was very kind gentleman okay so now I am trying to view this If you uh, click on all the correct options, the tall, fine. Okay, there is no feedback yet, just it is giving points for us. So how do we give feedback? There is an option here called overall feedback. As I said, for every content type, you can provide feedback and also behavioral settings. So you can add different ranges and you can ask it to distribute evenly. So here I, give need practice uh, for 34 to 66 i will say good and 67 to 100 i will say excellent so now we will see how it looks like need practice see this and if you want to provide along with this how much they 
score total how many points are there then you can provide you got at the rate score of at total points so it will give you how many points total are there and how much you really scored see so once you give that go to behavioral settings for every content type you have behavioral settings that uh, differs from content to content so you want to show the score points or you want to show the solution you want to enable retry you can decide i enabled all of them by ticking this checkbox and now i'll try to save it as h5p file so i'm saving it on my desktop so now i can open this file again using this tab open h5p file or if i want to export it as html then choose export from file and then choose as all in one html file then i will say include reporter i will say show rights and permissions also then export now again i'll save it as on my desktop as a html file so for any html file we just need a browser to view that particular piece of content so once it saves yes it saved and now we'll try to open that i'm opening in my chrome see rights of use created by because we added author information and license and then now the user will interact we can give because i gave a retry option and a show solution this is how you can create mark the words content type using loom so once the user interacts he can always he or she can always download this loomi file by clicking on the small download button on the right hand side this will appear then only when you include reporter while exporting a file click on that for example i'll save it uh, with my name and it will go it got downloaded that dot loomi file can be sent to the teacher and teacher can open these files in a loomi analytics and see the analytics but remember analytics are still in a very early stage of development okay so this is about uh, my presentation on fast and especially on loomi and h5p i would like to or uh, see if there are any questions otherwise i would like to show how this lumi analytics work ma'am uh, show us uh, how lumi uh, this works and uh, we'll take up the questions towards the end of the program okay i still have uh, 10 more minutes yes ma'am okay great so let me show you how it looks like the analytics part for example you have provided this mark the words where the user and then you distributed this file let us see this if we don't include how this export option looks like we'll click on export i don't want to include a reporter neither i have rights and permission i selected and there are display options that i can restrict width and align centrally also and then uh, the margins that i can provide but i am leaving it as uh, with the default options now i am exporting it as again all in one html file let us open that file i'm saving it as to marking it as to so that i can open it so at this time i am not uh, saving with the report or neither the rights option now we'll see how it looks like the html file okay so it is the two option and see this is just a merely a simple html file any other html file it just need a browser to 
operate. There is no um, a Lumi reporter option also, and there is no um, rights that or to display, you know, usage rights, we call it. You don't know. The beauty of H5P activities are they are if they are shared with open licenses you can download and then use them reuse them for example i would like to show you one activity here based on rhyming words it is a course presentation okay so i really liked it and there they presented and then also there are some activities given the the uh, partitioned the presentation for a, to present a content and also to present an activity. If you want to download it, you can click on this reuse option and then download it and then use it in your, use your Lumi application to open and see the entire content type. That's the beauty of H5P activities. Going back to the analytics part of it, uh, let me show you if we download this, let me again refresh this page with the reporter and let me also interact again. And this time, I think I'm all correct. Now I will download it with other name. Okay, this is another student. Think that this is another student. So now again, another student. Okay. So this is how um, she interacted. Now she will send you this file. She'll download this Lumi file and will send it to you. And then you will keep all these files in one folder. So I'll try to create a new folder with the uh, All these downloaded Lumi files that is sent by your users, right? So I'll keep all my Lumi files into one folder. Now I'll go to my Lumi application. First, let me save as H5P file this one so that I can open it again. Okay, I already saved it. Now I'll go back to Lumi Analytics. This is the Lumi Analytics part. So I'll click on the start. Now it is asking me to choose folder with dot Lumi files. Now I will choose a folder where I saved all my Lumi files sent by my learners. See, remember one user we kept we kept all correct and one user only two of them are correct and then that's how the analytics are shown to you as i said h5p activities are not for a summative ones but for a formative assessments coming back to our lumi so how to open an existing h5p file for example you really liked one mark the word uh, application and then you want to use it you downloaded it from the web and you know how to respect the copyright so now i open this i download it one mark the words file now i'll open it i'll try to understand what they have done how they have done and i'll check the behavioral settings and if i think this entire thing works for me i will use as is but filling all the metadata required, but from where I have downloaded this, for example, I've downloaded this from h5p.org. I will copy the URL and then I will use it here. Then I will provide all the authors. If the author names are there, I will provide, or if it is an organization, you can give and then this is a licensee, so I give. And what is the license? All H5P content types on H5P.org. If I'm not wrong, they are shared with CC by SA, so I provide that. So I can say, if I edit anything here, I can add my name as an editor. So now I'll say save metadata, and now I can share this file my, after modifying, after adapting it to my particular um, 
way of teaching or to suit my teaching learning environment as i said this is not just for mark towards content type it's not just for a um, language learning exercises creativity is the key and there is no limit sky is the limit for creativity where as and when a user thinks that this works then you can utilize for example uh, you want to give them an image or a video watch the above video and then click on various whatever berries mentioned in the text below you can add the video and then you can provide this activity option also we'll see how to add it for example i'm just taking a sample video from online okay okay berries where it is of Ma'am, uh, we have last couple of minutes left, and uh, we also yes, have yes, a few yes. queries. Yes, 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 Tan. Yes. Okay. I'll try to take a video from YouTube. Okay. Uh, usually, I take up any uh, openly licensed one so that I can reuse. As of now, on a time crunch. i'm just taking this option and then click on hello this is chat well in this video okay share option i'll copy this i'll come to this place i'll click on video and then i can give the title of the video on the video sources i can provide a video and i can add the metadata here who is the author what is the license all that information you have to fill it right now we are just trying to see how it looks like if we provide a video and then we will give a exercise for the user similarly you can provide not only a video also an image based mark the words option or audio based you can provide a audio lesson a simple audio chunk and then give this option to them so this is about how you create mark the words a simple uh, tutorial on how to create this particular piece of information so either either it is a science or mathematics or um, or language you can utilize this mark the word content type and create really wonders and the beauty of this is whenever you forget instructions how to add this uh, do this activity you can click on this show instructions and then you can watch and then you can create this activity if you need a tutorial you can always click on this tutorial option or you can see this example option too so this is about how to create mark the words activity using lumi application but there are if there is there is a lot is available over there if you drop down these are the various content types available try to download all of them when you are connected online and try to create them when you are offline that's more fun creating interactive activities not just for the learners to interact with the content but also for the creator like you thank you tanvi thank uh, you thank you so much ma'am and um, we'll take up a few questions because we uh, of the time constraint so uh, one of the viewers um, pushkar he's asking ma'am lumi works in any other language other than english or not yeah uh, that's what i was mentioning yes it supports uh, it supports not just uh, the content types to create but also the entire environment is available in various world languages and if you are a well wisher if you want to contribute like for example you want this entire application to be available in your mother tongue um you can contribute uh, as a volunteer you can go and translate for the interface to come in your language oh, you know that's great so uh, people from uh, regional places or even foreign languages if they know any they can translate it right yes great yes. that's a great thing uh, ma'am one last question would be uh, so lumi html files can they be shared in a link form on uh, any other platform let's say whatsapp or any other platform okay as a html file the question is whether it can be shared shared in a link form 
Yeah, in a link form. Okay. Okay, let me explain this. When you want it in a link form, that should be hosted somewhere to give you a link, right? Mm -hmm. But then you are providing uh, offline, then you have to give that entire file to them, a small HTML file. They just need a browser to open it. If you want to give them as a link, if you have a website, yes, please host this HTML file over there and then give that link to them. Okay. I hope I answered. <laughs> Okay, that's great, ma'am. And um, before uh, we leave, I would like to thank you for uh, explaining each and everything uh, regarding Lumi, regarding the H5P editor. And uh, you even demonstrated each and everything. A lot of questions uh, were there, but you have covered most of them. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so ma'am, for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all the viewers. We have received a lot of questions from your end and a lot of questions were regarding the feedback certificate and quiz and attendance link. So let me clarify all the uh, queries you have right now. If you simply uh, go to Google and type uh, CIET there, this is the front page you will see. So in this menu bar, you can see the option events. If you scroll it down, workshop slash training is the third last option in this uh, clear. Uh, if you click on it, so another page will open. So if you scroll it down further, you can see the current activity, which is this online training going on. Online training on development of e-content, interactive resources. Please click on it. And this is all the information regarding this online training each and everything what is the theme of it the schedule has been mentioned you can see the titles of each day from day one to day five have been mentioned the objectives who all can participate scroll it down and you will get to know everything regarding this online training here comes the qr code which you have to scan and uh, be a participant in it. Or you can click on this link, fill up the form and register yourself if you have not done it so far. This is the link of our YouTube channel NCRT official. Yesterday's uh, link, yesterday's sessions link has been updated and uh, to today's link will also get uploaded in this particular link so at the end of five days all the five programs sessions we have done uh, you can see in this one click if you scroll it down a little bit more further this is the space where you will be given the quiz link on uh, the last day that is 28th of july uh, once we'll be done with the session and uh, the link will be posted to you so you will have enough time to be a participant in this quiz and here is the feedback link. If you have any questions, queries, topics you want us to discuss, please click on it and share your feedback. Anything positive, anything negative, we are more than open. And uh, this is the only email ID that you have uh, to share your queries on training.helpdesk at the rate ciet.nic.in. So this is regarding everything uh, which is which you need regarding the uh, online training of development of e-content interactive resources. For now, we are wrapping up our today's program, but uh, tomorrow we'll come back again. And the day three's topic would be development of image-based interactive resources. Sharp at four o'clock uh, here itself. That is NCRT official our YouTube channel. We'll come back and uh, we'll do this program with another expert of ours. For now, I'm Tanvi Kurana. I'll take a leave of you, but uh, stay here. Don't go anywhere because another special program of ours, Sayog, is going to be here. And the topic of discussion would be communication for healthy relationship. Please raise your questions and be with us. Keep on watching Evitya channels. Before we leave, just want to remind you once again that if you have not purchased the NCRT textbooks for this new academic year, please purchase them. All the information regarding this, either uh, purchasing it from sales counter or uh, downloading the PDF versions or simply just uh, placing an order through our website is being mentioned in the form of ticker on your screens at the moment. Please give it a read and order your books as soon as you can. Thank you so much. Have a great day ahead. I'm leaving. Namaskar.